Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest to happen in running this week. This week's stories include the numbers one through six Ultra Runners of the Year announcement, Hoka One One's new trail team, and tortilla chip cereal. We continue this week with the remainder of the Ultra Runners of the Year top six. Number six male, Brian Rusecki, representing the East Coast Beast Coast, and his fifth straight year in the Ultra Runner of the Year top 10. He won the Vermont 100 and Massanutten 100 this year. Number six female. Showing what a competitive year it has been, Amy Sproston won the Black Canyon 100K in February and placed second at Western States. Number five male. When running an 1140 100-miler and setting a new course record at the Havilena 100 only gets you fifth place, you know you are Zach Bitter. Another stellar year for this fat-adapted ultra-athlete. Number five female. Devin Yanko also won a golden ticket race at the Sean O'Brien 100K and placed third at the Western States 100. Her win at the American River 50 may have edged her over Sproston. Number four male, Ian Sharman had another great year showcasing his versatility with his third consecutive wins at the Rocky Raccoon and Leadville 100s. He also continued his top 10 streak at Western States to seven consecutive years. Number four female, Carolyn Bowler placed second at JFK 50 and a couple weeks later smoked the Brazos Bend 50 in 548. She's also a previous winner of the Black Canyon 100K. Number three male, leading the field at this past summer's UTMB through 70 miles, and then delivering one of the most memorable performances of the year at the North Face 50 in San Fran is Zach Miller. We're just wondering, Hard Rock or UTMB in 2017? Number three female, perhaps the best style of the top 10 is Havilena 100K winner, Run Rabbit Run 100 champ, and fifth all-time American at 24 hours with 147.5 miles at Desert Solstice, Courtney DeWalter. Number two female, last year's Uroy and VP of Innovation at Goo with a third place finish at UTMB and top US finisher at TNF50 is Magda Boulay. And your female ultra runner of the year is Casey Liktai with her win at the Western States 100, Bear 100, and second at Lake Sonoma 50. The Pixie Ninja also beat the entire men's field in three of her seven victories in 2016. Without further ado, we move on to our men's top two. One of you is about to become our new Ultra Runner of the Year. If for any reason he is unable to fulfill his duties as Ultra Runner of the Year, the first runner up will take his place. Good luck to both of you. Male Ultra Runner of the Year 2016 is Bronco Billy. Uh, okay, folks, uh, there's, I have to apologize. The first runner up is Bronco Billy. Male Ultra Runner of the Year 2016 is Jim Walmsley. Uh, listen, folks, just let me take control of this. Uh, this is exactly what is on the card. I will take responsibility for this. It was my mistake. It was on the card. Horrible mistake, but the right thing, I can show it to you right here. The first runner up is Bronco Billy. Still a great year. Please don't hold it against these guys. Please don't, we feel so badly. You know, with all of the recent hype surrounding the beer mile, it's got me thinking. Just one year ago, our good friend Skizzlefresh set the new world record at the Beer Half Marathon. Yep, that's a thing. He drank a beer every mile for 13.1 miles and ran a 148. So here we go. I Jam Jam of Mountain Outpost officially am calling out all elite beer milers to a beer half against the current reigning champ, Skylar Hall. Yeah, he'll probably hate me for this because I'm fairly certain he's sworn off the beer half. But hey, what's the worst that could happen? So all you viewers out there, do me a favor and tweet at these guys and flow track while you're at it, and let's make 2017 the year of the beer half. To make this legit, we'll need Corey Belmore and Lewis Kent for starters. Josh Harris, Australian beer mile record holder, is already in. We've seen vegan, we've seen paleo, we've seen low carb and high fat. 
but we've never seen this before. Leadville 100 champ Claire Gallagher in her new mini film, Changing Course, gives us a peek into one elite athlete's diet. It's disgusting, yeah. A lot of other professional ultra runners are a little more scientific with what they put in their bodies, but if you know your body well enough, you can eat a lot of things. I'm here today to give Claire's way a try with tortilla chip cereal. First you got your chips. Then you got your almond milk. And then you got your sriracha. Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty and good. <coughs> Y'all should try this, legit. A woman stranded on the Kaibab Plateau above the north rim of the Grand Canyon with her child and husband hiked 30 hours in an attempt to reach someone for help in deep snow. She was forced to drink her own urine at one point and finally passed out in a cabin before being rescued. Her husband was able to get cell phone reception to call for a rescue team. Okay folks, just FYI, the North Rim is closed in winter due to snow. Don't go. A devoted track fan made a tweet promise to get a tattoo of 1500 meter athlete Matt Centrowitz if he medaled in Rio. Well, Matt won the 1500 meter final and Cameron ponied up with a tattoo of Centrowitz holding an American flag. Okay y'all, anyone up to get a tattoo of me standing by the yellow gate if I finish Barkley this year? There is a growing crackdown on PEDs. No, not performance enhancing drugs, but pedestrians. People traveling by foot, whether that is a walking pace or running pace. Recently, in Scottsdale, Arizona, runners have been targeted and forced to yield to hikers on the popular Pinnacle Peak Trail. Oklahoma City took it one step further with their ban of all pedestrians from dirt trails in Bluff Creek. The war on PEDs is real, folks. Hoka announced this week an intriguing arsenal of 2017 athletes, many of whom have come directly from the Nike Trail stables, including the Vargos, the Roches, and Tim Tollefson. These athletes joined Jared Hazen, Jim Walmsley, Mike Wardian, Sabrina Little, Pat Regan, Sage Canada, Carl Meltzer, Magda Boulay, and others for a powerhouse of a team. Walmsley has also been up to the international Evo Time to Fly team, which incorporates some of the top athletes in road, track, trail, ultra, and tri. Sage Canada will also be on the new global squad. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. If you have crazy stories to share, tweet us at Mountain Outpost. Have a pretty week.